hashtag FDCC2016, and we'll share them live here in just a little bit. I'm Damon Hatfield, this is Terry Schwartz, and it's time to talk about Luke Cage. Mike Coulter is Luke Cage, and Cheo Coker is executive producer. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. No, Thank he, you for having he us. He definitely is Luke Cage. I for mean, sure. the thing is, from the second he stepped on set, it was like, yeah. wow. Well, we've already seen him in, in Jessica Jones. Got yeah. A little taste of that. So we've had two seasons of Daredevil. We've had Jessica Jones. Next up is Luke Cage, premiering on Netflix September 30th. Tell us a little bit about what your show is going to be like. Well, um, I'll let Chael take it from here, but let me just say that first and foremost, it's different than Jessica Jones. So as much as everyone loves Jessica Jones, please don't expect that. We moved this uh, party uptown to Harlem. It's a different feel, different musicality, different people, different vibe. Um, yes, I'm still the same, but um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a different story we're telling. So I'll let Chael tell you the rest. Well, it's just kind of the journey of how does somebody become a hero? Like, how does someone from Jessica Jones who, you know, said quite clearly he never wanted to be a part of doing this because I think the line was, um, you know, either they're coming after you with a handout or a noose, they're, you know, mm -hmm. so you, we basically have taken that, taken that uptown and it's like, what makes somebody get involved? What makes somebody come out of the shadows to help? You know, how does a bulletproof man you know, change the ecology of a neighborhood with the cops and with the community. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a roller coaster ride, you know, and I, I think it's going to be a show that I, at once is fun, but at the same time, we basically hit a lot of different issues, but we do it in a way where it's always fun mm -hmm. and it's always interesting um, and really quite compelling. We got to know Luke pretty well in Jessica Jones. So when we pick back up with him in Luke Cage, how much is it going to feel sort of like a, a quick catch up, finding out what he's been up to since then? And how much do you guys start your own story and just move forward from there? I think, I think we take for granted that either people have seen Jessica Jones, A, or that the story that we're telling can stand alone. So we're not going to give you a, a quick synopsis of what happened prior to, you know, right. because if you didn't see Jessica Jones, um, which you should, definitely go check it out. But if not, if you start watching our show, the this, this, this series starts in a place where you can understand Luke's dilemma. You, we'll give you enough, enough of the backstory where you, you can catch up and just, and just go with it. The story, the story stands alone, so I don't think you need to worry about like, what, what, how does it start off. And if you don't know Luke Cage's story as a comic book fan, then I still think it works because we basically try to tell a story that is current, it's 2016, it's of the time, it has things that people can relate to, and whether he's a superhero or not, I think you can kind of still see the kind of man he's trying to be. He's a renaissance man who's basically learning to grow up as a man and also evolve as a superhero because essentially um, he's a I, I call him a renaissance man he's a he's a he's a work under development mm -hmm. in a sense so I, I like his journey I like the trajectory of, his, of the character and I think we can relate to him whether he has superpowers or not I think that's what's really interesting about these Netflix shows is yes they are superhero shows but they're very we use the word gritty but they are very like street level shows about the humans when tackling Luke Cage, and, and you said you're talking about dealing with some issues, does he feel a little bit like the right hero for the right time? Does, does it feel like you're getting sort of into some of the social issues that we're having in our own world well, right he, now? Well, he's kind of the perfect hero for the perfect time right now. I mean, I think of any of the heroes, in a, in a way, he's the most street level because not only is he out there, he's, he doesn't have a mask. You know, he... Literally, I mean, even though we'll, we'll deal more with, with him, Luke Cage versus Carl Lucas, I mean, he's out there with his name, he's out there just doing whatever he's doing. And the fact that he's stepping forward, even reluctantly, but as we kind of move forward, he becomes more confident in, in the fact that he is doing the right thing. And I think that's the thing, it's like, I mean, I'll never get tired of seeing a bulletproof black man. <laughs> you know? And that's the thing about this show is that it isn't that we set out to say anything as much as it is we just opened our eyes. Mm -hmm. And in terms of where he was going as a hero, what's happening now, and then at the same time acknowledging Harlem's past, and then the music, it, you just basically add water, mix it up, and, it, and it's refreshing. Yeah, I think I, think I read you guys are uh, mining 90s hip-hop yeah. a lot for the soundtrack. Uh, you know, yeah. That's, I think it was a sweet time for everybody, at least for me it was, <laughs> you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We also talk about how Luke was thrust into the role of superhero. Will we be learning more about his origins and how he came to have his powers? Yeah. Uh, you know. I, <laughs> yep, 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 yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm dying to tell you which episode, but, okay. but I, 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 I won't right. do that yet. Well, hold on a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You talk about the influence of 90s hip hop, but what sort of films and TV shows sort of influenced the style that you, you brought together for this show? I mean, we tried to be unprecedented, but I mean, you can't talk about this without talking about The Wire. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was always a huge influence from the standpoint of it being 
a show that was topical and was about something, but at the same time was, you know, it wasn't really just about politics of a city or culture. It was just people came to the forefront. And that's the thing about this is that, yes, Luke is a superhero, but he's also a man. And everyone in this show gets, gets a chance to be human, whether it's Luke, whether it's um, Misty Knight, whether it's um, Cottonmouth to a certain extent, is, is a, he's, a, he's a gonna be an incredible villain, you know, in terms of, and very nuanced villain. Um, Mariah Dillard is very interesting in terms of what we do with her, you know, although comic book fans will know her as Black Mariah. And, um, you know, Shade, Scarf, I mean, everybody gets a chance to kind of shine in their own way. Um, I can't really say it's as much influenced by anything as it is trying to blaze its own trail because we carry the mantle of being a superhero show, but at the same time, we're also trying to, you know, be compared to any other drama out there. And I think we accomplish both. Yeah. Why did Cottonmouth feel like the right villain to serve as a foil to Luke Cage? Well, because I think once you, you, you see Mahershala Ali and what he does with this role, it's like, it's, you, you put these two guys, these, these two guys in the same frame on a screen, it's like, oh my God, like you just, you can't wait to see what happens. Because yeah. um, he, you know, Mike has his own swagger as Luke Cage. Mahershala has his own swagger. And you, you put that much swag in a room, something's bound to jump <laughs> off in terms of a fight or whatever. And so I think that's the thing is that um, he's almost a classic villain, but at the same time, he's part of the, the fabric of what we're trying to do with the 90s vibe, with Harlem, with everything else. Yeah, and, and I like to, you know, sp you know speaking, speaking to that, during filming, there were times, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can echo the sentiment, but there were times when I felt like, you know, we had a nod or, or two to some of the um, classic black exploitation films in a subtle way. Because, you know, we can't ignore the fact that this is where this, this material was born from. Um, there were times where, you know, they, maybe it was the cinematography, maybe it was the setup, maybe it was the clothing or something. There's just something about some of the stuff that we did and some of the things that we said, or, or my character said, and I, I, I kind of went, wait a minute, I feel, I feel very, <laughs> like, you know, all of a sudden I feel very, like, um, Shaft-like or something. <laughs> it just came, like, you know, like, wow. You know, in the subtle ways, because ultimately, you know, he's a man of the time, and I think, I think the fact that he started in the 70s, I feel like we, we, we can't ignore that, and at the same time, he, he's a um, he's a person that it translates. It's, it's one of those things that it's timeless. The mm -hmm. character's timeless. So he could have been been in the seventies, or he could be now, and it's still just as effective. It's just a different time. But it's, I, feel, I felt like it kind of kind of felt a little, a little like that at times. So. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the, the show definitely has a has a mid nineties swagger. You know, what I'm saying like you think Wu Tang, you think uh, Mob Deep. You know. Um, that was the thing about having Adrian Young and, and Ali Shady Muhammad. Ali, of course, you know, I've known for 20 years being a member of Tribe Called Quest. Um, the thing is, is that we mix a lot of styles because there is the mid 90s vibe, but then at the same time, because of Ali and Adrian's score, I mean, it, you, you'll feel that Curtis Mayfield, you'll feel yeah. that Isaac Hayes. It's just got attitude. Like every time I watch the show, I'm like, damn, this is, this is really cool. <laughs> so we're almost out of time. We have time for a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Um, we're definitely very excited about how Luke Cage is going to fit into the Defenders later on. You know, we're at this point in the Marvel Netflix shows that it's, it's sort of like the Thor, it's the tipping point. We're close to the end, close to everything coming together. Do you guys get to play around with that at all and, and sort of start setting the, the pieces for everything coming together down the road? That's funny. I don't think, you know, it's, it's I think people think that you know, all of us is a master plan. And there is a master plan, I'm sure, at some level. But like with Chael, Chael has his own blueprint for what he wants to do with Luke Cage. And <clears throat> Melissa Rosenberg had her, her own uh, her blueprint. And then here you have Scott Buck, who's doing um, Iron Fist now. And then um, ultimately Daredevil. When they, we tell the story together, I think then again, we'll have another take, another, another nuanced, you know, understanding of how these characters coincide, how they work together. So I think it'll be another, another journey again, trying to reintroduce the characters and the flavor will be completely different. Well, and then the other thing about it is like, each individual series has its own vibe, but then you come together with the Defenders as a super group. So it's like, if, the, if Daredevil is, you know, the genius and, you know, Jessica Jones is Raekwon and we're Ghostface Killer, we're all gonna come together <laughs> with the Defenders as, as Wu-Tang. Yeah. Wu and so the same way that you can, individually like have your own favorite members of Wu-Tang but then when they come together as the group the you know that's really the power of and really the genius of how it's set up is that each show is individual but then when you put them together it's like 
everybody gets their moment, and then it's like, man, you know. Mike, I don't know if you're familiar with the Marvel superhero <coughs> strength scale. Yeah. It's a scientific scale, yeah. ranking the strength of Marvel superheroes. Okay. Luke Cage is on par with Loki. Okay. So Loki, wow. Would you feel comfortable going toe to toe with Tom Hiddleston? <laughs> um, on camera, off camera. I, I either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on camera, I think I, I, I think we would equal out. Yeah. Off camera. Um, a I, I'm, I'm going to take the high road. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming by the thank show. Thank you so much. Uh, Luke Cage premieres on Netflix September 30th. Yes. Check it out. Stay Check tuned. More out. to come from IGN Live here at San Diego Comic-Con 2016 after this.